Welcome to today's show. Today we're going to be talking about scrap metal. Yeehaw! Uh, if you don't like scrap metal, uh, click go on a cat video. Oh, hi there! Today we're going to be talking about HMS. What's that stand for? Heavy Melting Steel. Heavy melting steel is one of my favorite items in the whole entire scrapyard. I love it. There's just something about it. It's about it being unprepared, cutting it down, and making it smaller, seeing how dense you can get it. But it's one of my favorite items, and that's why I'm really, really excited to talk about it. Today, we're just going to talk about what it is. And later on, uh, maybe in another episode or something, another uh, whatever you want to call it, we're going to talk about why it's important to know what it is. The main reason is because it makes you more money! <laughs> makes you more money. HMS, heavy melting steel. Let's talk about it. You're going to have number one unprepared, like this piece, that meets the thickness requirements, but not the size requirements. And then you're going to have number one prepared, like this piece, which meets the thickness requirements, and it meets the size requirements. Before we begin, I want to make sure that everybody understands that every scrap yard has different specifications for how they want their scrap. So it's best to ask them first. These are just basic guidelines uh, that you can go by, but I can't stress that enough. Every scrap yard is different in how they produce their scrap. For beginners, I recommend after watching this video, you go to your scrap yard and once you get an idea of what this stuff looks like, look at their piles, see what they have in them, and most likely it's going to be good if you put the same thing in there, just like I'm doing here. This is uh, an example of a customer walking around looking at the piles, but it's just me. I'm just trying to give you all basis, general information for this. So, the first thing that I normally start with to explain heavy melting steel to people is the dimensions that it needs to be. It needs to be a quarter inch or thicker. Most cases, scrap yards require you to have it a quarter inch. I'm trying to get this the best I can on here so you can see, but the thickness of this pipe is a quarter inch. Now here's another piece of pipe. As you can see, when I put the tape measure up to it, uh, I can't get it quite over. Anyways, the thickness is not quite a quarter inch, but that's okay. In most scrap yards, this would still qualify as number one HMS. It's thick, it's heavy, it's dense. And depending on the scrap yard that you're selling to, it needs to be certain size dimensions as far as like two feet by three feet by two feet or two feet by three by three whatever it is it's got to be able to fit whatever the scrap yard that you're selling to is whatever their specs are is what it's got to be to be considered prepared so what I've done is built this awesome cube because this is the best way to explain to people yeah. This is the best way to explain to people the dimensions of number one HMS. Now, this cube that I made here is three feet by three feet by three feet. It's a three foot cube. And those dimensions I'm going off of because, you know, a lot of scrap yards, three feet is good to go. You know, the majority of them, if you got it three feet or under, it's good. So that's why I use three feet. But some are five foot, some are four foot. Uh, it just all depends. Like I said, it depends on the yard you go to. So our objective now is to see if once we've determined the thickness is good to go on our piece of metal that we have, if it fits in this cube. Here we have. Oh, and this is actually cast iron. Again, you gotta check with your yard. Are they okay with cast iron being in there? Maybe they do cast iron and pay more for it when it's all cast iron. It just depends on where you are. Does it fit in the cube? Yes! Woohoo! Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. 
This piece of steel is thicker than a quarter inch. Does it fit in the cube? It sure does. Voila! Bam! Does this fit in the cube? Yep, it's number one prepared. Does this fit in the cube? Yep. I feel like I'm doing a Blue's Clues episode. Look at this. I had to cut this in half because before it was unprepared, but now it is prepared. It's a gym bar for lifting weights. Does it fit in the cube? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Yes, it does. See this piece? This piece is a quarter inch or thicker. This is considered PNS. That stands for plate and structural. But we'll get into that in another YouTube video. The thing I want you to know is that you can put plate and structural in your number one HMS prepared, but you can't put HMS in your plate and structural. Because plate and structural is worth more money in most cases, in most places. So nobody's gonna complain if it's in your HMS number one prepared. Look what I found. A tire rim. Does it fit in the cube? May or may not be a quarter inch or thicker. But it fits, it's good. In fact, there are some steel mills that'll pay a premium if you send them nothing but tire rims. When talking about thickness, it's important to remember that some steel mills and some scrap yards only allow a certain amount of thickness as well. Meaning, if it's some, some of them have a cutoff of six inches. So if it's thicker than six inches, they, they don't want it. Uh, th that's when you start having problems with uh, having to melt it down. All right, let's take our three foot cube on a journey to look at some bigger pieces like this one. Well, as long as the scrap yard or steel mill you're selling to is okay with cast iron being in there, this piece is good to go. Let's move to this piece. Rot row. It's too big, but that's okay. This cube I built is three by three by three. If I'm selling to someone that's okay with four foot pieces, then this would still qualify because it still fits the other dimensions. It's just too wide or long, or however you want to look at it. And even if they didn't allow four foot pieces, you're still allowed a certain small percentage, it just depends on where you're going and who they're selling it to, of oversized material. That doesn't mean you can have a 20 foot piece in your number one heavy melting steel. It means if you have a piece here and there that's four foot or five foot, probably not gonna complain. Plus, when you look at this cube, you're thinking, wow, that's all three feet is? Trust me, it's three by three by three. Most operators, when they're unloading a load of scrap like this, they look at it and go, yeah, looks about three feet. People are always wrong on their measurements all the time. So, like I always say in my other videos, if it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, must be a duck. All right, let's see if this next piece meets our size requirements. Nope, guess not. Now let's talk about density. We've gone over the size dimensions and the thickness dimensions, but now we got to talk about the density requirements. Most places require about 40 to 50 pounds per cubic foot so that means for every cubic foot the material has to weigh 40 to 50 pounds and that's throughout the whole load so your whole load has to average out that much so this piece here is an example of that I had to cut this piece in half because it met our thickness requirements and our size requirements but the density per cubic foot may or may not have been there but I'm still gonna have to cut it in half so that it becomes more dense. Don't get density confused with weight. When we're talking about density, density is the measure of compactness of a material. So this is the same weight here as it is here. But now it's more dense because we have put the same amount of weight in a smaller area. 
The reason they want density is so that they can melt down more weight at one time with the same amount of energy. It would make no sense to waste the same amount of energy and melt something down that didn't have as much weight in it. Something else to remember when you're dealing with number one heavy melting steel is that you cannot have non-metallics or non-ferrous in your heavy melt. This is a piece of aluminum. It's non-ferrous. If it's attached to the piece that you have, it has to come off or it can't go in there. This is a non-metallic, meaning it's not made out of metal. It's plastic. So let's say this came off of a refrigerator or something. That's okay to throw in with your tin, your shreddables. It's going to go to a shredder and they're going to shred it up. It's common. But when you're dealing with number one HMS, they want to throw that straight into the, the steel mill to be melted down. They don't want to process it. This is why you get paid a premium because of the density and the quality of the steel is better. This is a cylinder with the cylinder rod still in it and the cylinder barrel. This is also considered what steel mills would call a closed cylinder. These are a huge no-no and cannot be bought as number one even if they're only this big. They have to either, some scrap yards require them to be cut in half, some require them to be cut in half in a hole down here for the air to escape. The reason being is if you threw this into the melt, it becomes a gigantic bomb! Even if you had just a regular steel pipe that was capped off on both ends and welded shut airtight, that is still considered a closed cylinder and it would need to be cut in half so that it doesn't create a bomb. Oh. Wow, that was a whole lot of information to learn. And there's probably a whole lot more that I didn't cover about number one heavy melting steel. I'm trying to keep my videos a little bit shorter so they don't become so boring. So, tune into another video once I make it that will talk about how separating your number one HMS can make you more money and how to get a scrapyard to pay you more money for it because sometimes they don't. Hope you like that video. Bye.